Perfect? Bang on my chest if you think I'm perfect. Go ahead, bang on it. No heart? You gotta have heart. Miles and miles of heart. This is Patchwork Heart Ministries Young Catholics Respond, brought to you by Breadbox Media. Now, here's your host, Bill Snyder. Thanks, Adam, and welcome to the program, everybody. I am Bill Snyder, and it is a pleasure to have you joining me today for Young Catholics Respond. No matter where you are listening from, uh, we got a great growing listening audience. And so no matter how you found us, uh, please let us know that you found us. Reach out to us on the Internet. Uh, you can email us at info at patchworkheart.org. You can find out about our website at patchworkheart.org as well. And just let us know where you're listening from, what what episodes you like or don't like for that matter. And then we can, uh, you know, start interacting. You can get our weekly emails. Our ministry is just growing by leaps and bounds. And we are uh, very excited to have um, with us today on this episode, Tony Agnesi. Tony Agnesi is a Hall of Fame broadcaster, a best-selling author, and an award-winning blogger. Tony is a master storyteller and inspirational speaker. His latest book is A Storyteller's Guide to Joyful Service, and in it, he talks about turning uh, a collection of stories that celebrates turning life's uh, misery into ministry. And t- Tony, in addition to that, is an award-winning blogger, uh, named one of top 100 Catholic blogs, and was a finalist for the 15th Annual International Weblog Awards. He's a frequent guest on radio and uh, a member of the Catholic Writers Guild, a frequent contributor to Christian publications. Tony and his wife, uh, Tony and his wife Diane, of now 46 years, live lives in Wadsworth, Ohio. But right now they are vacationing in Florida. Tony, welcome to the program, and thank you again for joining me on Young Catholics Respond. Bill, thank you so much for the invitation. It's great to be back with you again. Yeah. So you know we're in Lent right now, and um, Tony, you know I wanted to talk to you uh, about. Um, you know, Lent, first of all, and what Lent is for maybe some um, Catholics out there that that struggle with it. I know Ash Wednesday is one of the most attended, well-attended church days out there. Um, but, but you know, let's unpack Lent a little bit, and then let's talk about some family sure. and forgiveness. Absolutely. Well, you know, uh, Ash Wednesday is kind of an interesting, uh, interesting in the fact that it kind of it kind of goes beyond even uh, even our Catholic faith. I. It reminded me of a story, Bill, of a, a few years back uh, that I went to a, a noon mass at a, a downtown church where I live, and, which is right near the college campus. And as I went into the Ash Wednesday mass, uh, there was a group of young students sitting in the row I usually sit in. So I sat in there with them and I realized right away that many of them weren't Catholic and, uh, and uh, you know, they kind of stumbled their way through the service. And then we all went up and received our ashes. So I had an opportunity to engage him in a little conversation at the end of mass. And I asked the first uh, young gal next to me and I said, are you Catholic? And she said, no, I'm a non-denational, a non-denominational Christian. And of the four students, only one was Catholic and marginal at best baptized, but uh, didn't practice the faith. And two were agnostic. And I said, well, geez, what brought you to mass today? And they said, the ashes. And I said, what about the ashes? And, they said there's just something about the concept of Lent that's appealing to young people. It's the idea of dying to self and giving something up that we take for granted that maybe others don't have. And um, it's a period of time that we reflect on our own lives and, and, and what is our purpose in life. And these young people find that very appealing. And I think that's one of the reasons why uh, Ash Wednesday Mass is so well attended, is that uh, it causes us, not only we as Catholics, but everyone to kind of think about our own lives and, and, and where we are in our lives. And, and is there somebody out there that we need to forgive? Are we grateful for what we have and so forth? So I think uh, the the idea of, of that is what really kind of triggers the whole Ash Wednesday thing. And, and you know, uh, a lot more than Catholics kind of give something up for Lent. You know, you, you know we always talk about, what did you give up for Lent, Bill? Well, you know, I, I used to give up broccoli and asparagus because <laughs> I really don't like broccoli or asparagus. Uh, or <clears throat> I would give up watermelon, Bill, because it's out of season. And even though I love watermelon, it's out of season. So that's not much of a 
not much of a um, a challenge. There was uh, uh, the Ash Wednesday Mass down here in Florida, and a lot of a uh, lot of elderly people here in Florida, obviously. And the uh, priest uh, on Ash Wednesday in his uh, homily said, "Geez, uh, I've had about eight calls at the rectory this week, wondering how old you had to be before you didn't have to fast anymore." And he said he looked out among the uh, among the congregation. The church was full, and he said, "Ninety-nine point nine percent of you don't need to fast anymore because it's age fifty-nine, but you still do need to abstain." And we abstain from meat on Ash Wednesday and the Fridays of Lent, Good Friday, and so forth. And so he said, "So if you're going out to the Turtle Club tonight, don't get the New York Strip." <laughs> so it just so happened that that night, uh, Diane and I, my wife and I, were going to the Turtle Club, and we're sitting there, and the uh, waiter who uh, we know was uh, waiting on a an elderly couple just to the side of us, and um, he asked the gentleman what he wanted, and he said, I want the New York Strip, and his wife raised her finger and said, no, 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 remember what Father said, you know, we have to abstain from meat, and he said, okay, then I'll have the three-pound lobster. Well, <laughs> kind of missed the point, right? <laughs> kind of missed the point of what abstaining for meat is supposed to do. Just like I did as a kid, missed the point by giving up broccoli and and, and asparagus. So right. I, I think sometimes when we when we sit back and we think we we really want to kind of come to terms with during Lent, what are the things about my life that I need to change? Yeah, and you know that's a really good point. I think. Um... When you when you talk about it in that in that vein, I think it's something that people can get behind, right? I think it's something that people can uh, rally behind and um, and look at because we know. I think there's a inside each human heart. There's something that we know inside of us innately that we're not perfect. We're not complete, and uh, regardless of whether you are. Uh, Catholic or you're not Catholic, as you know, some of those students that you encountered at Mass said, there's something about it that did, it's just that self-examination, that time to look in, inward and say, what can I do and what can I do better? Um, you know, I, I know that there's those three pillars of, of Lent, you know, the, the alms, fast giving, uh, fasting, and, uh, prayer. and prayer, <laughs> And so, mm-hmm. you know, when, when, when we begin to look at the, the, those three pillars and um, what, what are some of the uh, tools that, that a person that may be on the fringe out there, like just walked into the church on Ash Wednesday for ashes but doesn't set foot there any other day of the year, um, what are some of those ways that we can maybe spark them to begin thinking a little more? Well, that's a great question, and and a lot of it has to do with those three things. You know, prayer. Uh, you know, a prayer life uh, obviously uh, gives us the opportunity to uh, be grateful for what we have, and to and to really decide that we're going to work on those things that uh, that w- that will make us better. And I, I totally agree with you. I think part of the natural law, Bill, is that innately in our DNA, you know, uh, we have built into us. Uh, this idea that knowing that we're that we're that we fall short of the mark, that we're sinners, and that there's things we can do to improve. And oftentimes during the Easter season, uh, people are burdened. You know, they are heavily burdened. Uh, um, uh, a kid might have uh, had a, flunked out of school. Uh, uh, somebody might be going through a divorce. There's there's people that. Um, that have all sorts of problems in their lives or they're estranged from a family member because of a spat that maybe maybe even took place 10 years ago you know and uh, oftentimes in my in my own family there was a, a little rift between uh, the generation above me and the family kind of split into two directions and as a young man i kept saying to my mom well why can't we get everybody back together and after a while, she couldn't even remember what broke, what caused this fat. And uh, and I encouraged her, and she did. And the family was back together and reconciled and so forth. And it happened so beautifully during uh, Lent and the Easter season, so that when we go to Mass on Easter Sunday, that we are relieved of that burden that, uh, that we have. Um, and so I think oftentimes... Um, 
we have these forgiveness issues, and uh, we're reminded of these forgiveness issues during this time of year. How do we how do we go how do we go about looking at those forgiveness issues, and why is it important that we forgive? You know, there's all these little memes that are on the internet uh, holding a grudge is like somebody living rent free in your head or uh, anger is an acid that can do more harm to the vessel than uh, than when it's poured out holding on to anger is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die you know we've been wronged a lot of people have been wronged and uh, oftentimes we have to find ways to seek out forgiveness and uh, um we have to forgive people, and there there are many, many examples in the Bible of why and how we should forgive, you know, and uh, they reminded me, uh, Bill, I could share a little story with you. This is kind of a, a story that has really helped me to understand forgiveness. There were two elderly Holocaust survivors who met when they were in their 80s, and these two Holocaust survivors were Uh, discussing the time that they spent in a German concentration camp. And the first man said, I'm still angry after all these years. I can never forgive what they did to me. And he said to the second man, what about you? And the second man replied quietly, I have long forgiven them. And the first man was shocked in an angry voice. And he said, how could you forgive what they did? I will never forgive them. And then the second man humbly said, then you're still their prisoner. You see, forgiveness is for ourselves. Forgiveness is allowing the grace of our Lord to to help us get through that. That uh, you know, sometimes we think that uh, that the person we hurt didn't say they were sorry, um, or or the road to you know the road to peace begins with them taking a step. And it's not. John Paul II said forgiveness is the restoration of freedom to oneself. Uh, It's the key uh, that we hold in our own hands and our own prison cell to release us from from that prison. So it's very, very important uh, that at this time of year that some of the the, the, to me, one of the most important things we could do is uh, is to forgive. But let's not forget that. God, uh, through Jesus Christ, Jesus died on a cross for what? For the forgiveness of our sins. And that comes with a price. And the price that it comes with is that we must also forgive, you know? No, that's so beautiful. Um, So beautiful. Uh, What a a great um, story and what a great thing to to remember um, that 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 Jesus um, and and sacrifice and forgiveness are all part of one gigantic family that gets us um, access to grace and to heaven, ultimately. Uh, Tony, I have to take that uh, short break here, but when we come back, uh, we're going to continue talking with you about you know family forgiveness, sacrifice, uh, and really how it's all connected, especially during this Lenten season, and how we're called to it uh, in a special way this Lenten season. So uh, right back after these messages here on Young Catholics Respond, I'm Bill Snyder. St. Therese of Lisieux's Little Way of the Cross, written by Victoria Clarizo and designed by Just Love Prince, is a beautiful prayer booklet that helps you pray the Stations of the Cross. Use these reflections to meditate on the great love and mercy that Jesus had for us as he journeyed to Calvary. The Little Way of the Cross includes gems from Scripture, the writings of St. Therese, and the words of Jesus from the imagination and prayer of the author. Go to JustLovePrince.com to get your copy today. Hi everybody, Bill Snyder here. Just want to thank you for listening to this episode of Young Catholics Respond. And as a founder of Patchwork Heart Ministry, we have so much more going on than just our podcasts. Check it out at patchworkheart.org. How has the Men of Christ Conference impacted men and families? Right now we're running a farm. We work farmer's markets on Saturdays. My real job is uh, being a teacher. The excuses I had, we were trying to split the time between the farm and the family. How do you make time for God? How, how do you make time for a conference? Uh, you just make time. It gives me an opportunity to, to take in and recharge spiritually. 
I want to invite these men to come closer to Christ because ultimately that's our goal. The impact that Men of Christ has on my life is that it has really made me more an efficient man. It's really shown me the gravity of my responsibility, especially in the spiritual realm. Join 3,000 men on Saturday, March 30 in Milwaukee for the Men of Christ Conference. Learn more and register at menofchrist.net. That's menofchrist.net. Patchwork Heart Ministry is committed to sowing hope into broken hearts by helping young people encounter the love of Jesus Christ and His Catholic Church through prayer, storytelling, and media initiatives. We invite you to prayerfully consider supporting this mission financially. Mail your tax-deductible donation to Patchwork Heart Ministry at P.O. Box 563, Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, zip code 53147 or visit patchworkheart.org to donate online. That's Patchwork Heart Ministry, P.O. Box 563, Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, 53147, or online at patchworkheart.org. Your heart is always beating, but you never have to think about it. Welcome back to Young Catholics Respond. Once again, Bill Snyder. Welcome back, everybody, to this episode of Young Catholics Respond. I am Bill Snyder, and uh, so glad that you've joined us today for this episode. Uh, if you've, this is the first time you've joined us, I want you uh, to go and check out our website, patchworkheart.org, uh, and you can also subscribe to our email list right on the website for the weekly episode of Young Catholics Respond in your inbox. It will be delivered right to your email inbox. We don't spam. We only send one email a week. Um, so check that out and subscribe to our podcast uh, via our website. And also, uh, today on today's program, we are uh, talking with Tony Agnesi. He's a storyteller, a Catholic author, speaker, a very inspirational guy, uh, and a good friend of our ministry. And uh, Tony, we were talking before the break um, about the connection between uh, that, that sacrifice and forgiveness. And I, and I kind of want to flesh that out a little bit more. You know, what is that connection um, and why is that connection so important that when we give up something or when we make um, a sacrifice of ourselves or a gift of ourselves to another person, it leads us ultimately into forgiveness? Oh, absolutely. This is a, the connection begins with uh, Jesus dying on the cross for our sins, that, uh, that, the, that the price he paid, that the suffering that he went through um, for us so that we are forgiven. And as I said earlier, it comes with a price. And that, that price is we must forgive too. And as Jesus unlocks uh, the chain of our sinfulness, we're empowered by the Holy Spirit to forgive those who hurt us. And some of the suffering that we go through, and we use the word suffering, but just by giving up something, by giving up watermelon, who is who, who, who gains from that? Well, nobody. Why not why not give something up for Lent that has an effect on others? That's the sacrificial part of it. If I sacrifice my uh, double latte mocha mint every day, uh, that's five bucks, and I give that money to a, a, um, a charity, now my sacrifice means something. It, it takes on meaning. And it doesn't have to involve money. I don't want to suggest that. But that my sacrifice takes on meaning and that <clears throat> that we understand that that um, uh, Christ died for us. You know, how many times are we supposed to forgive? Well, in Matthew it says seventy times seven, right? And uh, and the, do I forgive everything? That is there any sin that this can happen that I I shouldn't forgive? Anything that somebody has committed against me? And the answer is no. The Lord asks us to forgive everything. Look as. Jesus was on the cross. He said, you know, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Um, and, you know, people have asked me before, and this is a great question, uh, Bill. They say, uh, you, what if I, I'm going to forgive somebody and they're not even sorry? Well, they don't need to be sorry for you to forgive. You know, I, I like to use the word beforegiveness. You know, forgiveness is beforegiveness. You give pardon before 
forgiveness is asked for, or if it's, if it's never asked for, well, what if the person continues to hurt me? You know, then we, then we have to try to get this out of our mind that this, you know, uh, uh, anger and resentment uh, are, are, are a, uh, a banquet and you're the entree. It's eating you, not them. They're probably not even thinking about it. And so forgiveness is a very important part of this. And that as we go off to, to uh, Mass on Easter Sunday, when we walk down the aisle to receive the Eucharist, that we have unburdened our hearts from these from these things that have 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 you know hurt us over the years. That we give them up and and leave them, if you will, right at the altar as we do that. Uh, I think that's a very important part of everything that we try to accomplish during the Lenten season. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think one of the things that you kind of touched on uh, maybe in um, is, is the fact that, you know, our families can be difficult challenges for us. There are there are people that, you know, we are given in our life that, that are a great blessing, but at the same time, we can have problems with our families, right? Um, and, yeah. and they're people that we don't necessarily escape. We see them at you know, even if it's an extended family, we see them at, you know, holiday seasons and times. And um, as you said, you know, they might not, the, 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 those people that that are, you know, constantly, you know, difficult in our lives, how, how, how do you deal with, I mean, I think every person's situation is unique, but, but how do you deal with people that are continually in your life that maybe continually re-offend you or re-challenge uh, you, um, you know, to you know, to how do you forgive them and continue to, um, you know, try and have a relationship with them at the same time? I mean, that's incredibly difficult. It really is. You you've hit on a topic here, Bill, that is really really difficult. There's a there's an old saying that uh, what do what do relatives and fish have in common? And the answer is they both start to stink after three days. <laughs> and uh, oftentimes we are uh, put together with people that uh, you know, especially uh, at the holidays that. Uh, that after about uh, you know after about the first few hours we we can't wait for the holiday to be over well that's <laughs> certainly no way to celebrate a holiday it's difficult we have to take that to we have to take that to our lord and we have to you know remember that we're asked to forgive and we're asked to forgive over and over again 70 times 7 i think is what it says in matthew's gospel and, and you know i'm not a math wizard but i think that's an awful number a lot of times that we uh, that we have to forgive me. And forgiveness, by the way, is not a feeling. This is the other thing that people will think about. This forgiveness is a decision we make. Um, we, you know, not only pray for those people who have hurt us, but we kind of try to treat them politely. And oftentimes, you know, they continue to, to, um, to bug us as we, as we go through things. But, uh, we need to, um, you know, to forgive someone, you know, and I, I always ask people, uh, and I'll ask him here today, who's the one person in your life that you need to forgive? Is there one person in your life that if you made contact with and, and found a way to find forgiveness would make your Easter uh, more appealing and would make your Easter more meaningful? and uh, would make your Lenten sacrifice come to life? But those are questions we should all ask ourselves during this, you know, during this Lenten season. Um, you know, I mentioned earlier, you know, there are things that, uh, that uh, happen and that Easter kind of uh, brings out some of these burdens. Uh, the friend that was just diagnosed with cancer, uh, an Easter passes when we're still estranged from our loved ones we haven't spoken to in years or, the anger and resentment of a marriage gone badly or the loneliness of sitting in the pew alone uh, uh, or the fear of what life might be like when Alzheimer's takes my husband or wife from me. And sometimes these burdens are too big for us to personally handle. And uh, as Psalm 55 says, cast your care upon the Lord who will give you support and he will never allow the righteous to stumble you know, and so as we uh, go to Mass uh, this coming Easter Sunday in just a few weeks from now, and uh, it's time to take all those burdens and pain and anger and resentment and, 
and leave it at the altar. It's you know time to release those feelings. Um, and as you approach the altar on uh, on Christmas Day, it's uh, for to receive the Eucharist. It's uh, what are you going to leave there? What anger, resentment, what what uh, problems are you going to leave at the altar? You know the fear of losing a loved one. You leave it at the altar. The anger that you feel from being wrongly accused, you leave it at the altar. The resentment of being passed over for a promotion at work, leave it at the altar. The pain that makes even getting out of bed difficult, leave it at the altar. Pray, you know, Lord, I I lay my fears and pain and anger and resentment at the foot of the cross. And uh, if you do that, if you take these few weeks we have left before Easter, and do that, you will enjoy uh, the peace and the grace that comes from the life, death, and resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Tony, uh, wow. Uh, Just great stuff, and uh, it certainly is a a powerful thing uh, to just leave those problems, leave those issues um, right at the altar, leave the worries, leave the anxieties that we encounter in this life at the altar Easter day um, and and know that you are called to a new life uh, and all listeners are called to a new life everyone all Catholics all Christians called to a new life um, on that on that beautiful and wonderful day um, absolutely absolutely you know we, we uh, yeah ask yourself this one question each of you that are listening what's the one thing that I must unburden myself of. What's the one thing that I'm going to leave at the altar as I receive the Eucharist on Easter Sunday? That one thing will change how you how you approach the rest of 2019. Amazing. Hey, Tony, I want to ask you just real quick how uh, our listeners can reach out to you and hear more about your ministry and, and what you're doing uh, these days. I know you're always active writing books and blogging and speaking and doing whatnot. So just tell us how uh, people can get in touch with you in the last few minutes that we have. I sure will. Uh, first of all, I have a, a, a new radio program and, and you've been a guest on it, a wonderful guest uh, on the show. It's called The Storytellers and you can access it uh, from thestorytellersradio.com. And it's also available at Breadbox Media, which I know you're, all of your programs are on Breadbox Media as well. That uh, radio program uh, um, um, airs on a weekly basis, and it's uh, it's half an hour. And I, I bring in some guests who really have some wonderful stories to tell, as you did uh, when you were a guest on the show. My website is TonyAgnesi.com, T-O-N-Y-A-G-N-E-S-I.com. There are over 180 short podcasts that are on there called five minutes with Tony there that yeah, we call them snackable podcast bill because you can uh, you know you can uh, listen to them in a real quick uh, uh, three four minutes uh, and then my uh, the radio show is available there there are over 300 blog posts there and um, there are some uh, a video from some appearances and talks I've made and so forth uh, just a lot of information there that that uh, that you might find enjoyable, and uh, so go to t o n y a g n e s i dot com, and um, and spend a little time there and and uh, check it out. Also, both of my books are available there, and because uh, we're on the show with you today, if they use the promo code friends f r i e n d s and buy either or both of the books, they'll get. 10% off their order, and they will get free shipping, and I will personally sign each book. <laughs> awesome. Hey, Tony, thank you so much. Uh, I know this won't be the last time you're on Young Catholics Respond. I know that. Um, and, and thank you so much for, uh, for your time and, and, and telling just amazing stories uh, for us today. Well, thank you so much, Bill. It's been great being with you. Uh, have a wonderful uh, uh, Lenten season and a beautiful and beautiful and happy Easter this year. Yes, you too. Uh, and this has been an episode of Young Catholics Respond. Until next time, from all of us here at Patchwork Heart Ministry, I'm Bill Snyder. Keep beating to your Catholic heart. You've been listening to Young Catholics Respond, a radio initiative of Patchwork Heart Ministry. To learn more about our ministry and program, visit us at patchworkheart.org. Or to get exclusive access and early ministry updates, become our patron on Patreon by searching for Patchwork Heart Ministry.